In the U.S., the third day of the Democratic National Convention is underway, with Tim Walz set to address the crowd and formally accept his vice presidential nomination. You are looking at live pictures from Chicago. Thousands of delegates are there for the convention, which officially confirmed Kamala Harris and Waltz as the party's nominees. And the convention begins the final stretch of the White House campaign. Former President Bill Clinton also spoke on day three of the convention. That followed Michelle and Barack Obama, who headlined the convention's second day, where both received rapturous receptions. All right, let's go to Janelle Dumoulin, who is in Chicago at the Democratic Convention. Janelle, welcome. This is arguably the most important speech of Tim Walz's political career. What can we expect? The most important speech of his political career is likely an understatement, Steve. This is also possibly the biggest crowd that he will ever have faced. The United Center has a, a seating capacity of some 23,500, but he's lucky that he has the celebrities like the likes of Keenan Thompson, who is speaking right now, Baloney from Saturday Night Live, of course, to warm the crowd up. Now, while it is fascinating to see how quickly Walls gained traction, how quickly he became a household name, this really is an opportunity of, for him to show the American people who he is, who he is beyond Midwestern dad, beyond high school football coach, yeah. beyond community champion. It's an opportunity for him to tell the delegates here and also all the millions of viewers watching at home what he can really bring policy-wise uh, to the Harris administration if she were to become president. Now, of course, he was chosen as a vice presidential pick for, uh, um, for his ability, perhaps, or for his hoped ability to bring in the white male working class voter. Now, perhaps we'll have an indication from his speech tonight as to how he might be able to do that. But uh, one other thing that we might be able to watch out for, the theme for tonight is the defense of freedom. So the defense of reproductive rights, uh, the defense of democracy. So we are expecting Tim Walls to set himself up as a defender of those freedoms that the Democrats feel are under threat and uh, perhaps some concrete ideas as to how exactly he intends to be that person. We know Bill Clinton will also speak tonight. Janelle, what role does the former president play for Democrats some 25 years after leaving office? Clinton has become a sort of elder statesman for the party, but more importantly for Kamala Harris and for Tim Walz, he's also seen as one of the party's most effective uh, communicators when it comes to messages about the economy. So his ability to express in simple terms perhaps complex uh, and nuanced uh, economic issues could be seen as a particular boon to Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, who have made um, who have made at the heart who have put at the heart of their economic policy helping working class families helping to build the middle class so they're hoping Bill Clinton is somebody who would be able to hammer the home point or hammer the point home to voters as to how uh, this this uh, this administration would be able to do that if they were elected now on another note if it's also been reported that uh, after seeing just how much energy and good vibes uh, this convention has generated in the past two nights, Bill Clinton reportedly ripped up the speech that he had been working on to start anew with uh, a, a much more joyful, light and cheerful tone. So we'll also be on the lookout if that is in fact a, something that he has been, he had been able to manage. Well, speaking of messaging, this year's nomination process was unusual for Democrats and potentially divisive, of course, with Biden pulling out so late. Are we seeing a unified message at this convention? Well, in many respects, uh, they really do seem to be singing from the same hymn, hymn book. Uh, so you've had these messages of hope. You've had these messages of a new chapter. Um, uh, 
a hopeful look into the future. And of course, uh, the, f the defense of those freedoms that I was talking about, like reproductive rights. But to say that the party is unified on all issues, of course, that is something that is not achievable. And that's also something that has not been achieved here. One of the biggest divisive issues, of course, is the Democrats' policy towards Israel and Gaza all week long. There have been protests going on outside of the DNC. They're expected to continue until tomorrow. That is the last day. You also have the 30 or so delegates of the uncommitted movement. They represent some 700,000 voters, and they do want to see assurances from Kamala Harris and Tim Walls that there will be a permanent ceasefire in Gaza, that they will consider uh, stopping arms transfers to Israel. And so far, there's uh, very little to suggest that uh, uh, this ticket would be able to or is even inclined to reverse uh, decades of uh, almost unconditional support to Israel. So even beyond this convention, that is going to be an issue that remains divisive. Uh, and it's uh, even if it's not showing up here in the ways uh, or in, in the volume that it was expected to ahead of this convention, it still remains an issue. All right, Janelle Dumoulin at the Democratic Convention in Chicago. Many thanks.